particles like these so fast and cool. Bombs out of mechanics and pipe up some cold words But no one can deny the fact that on the theory works I'm going to cover a couple of things in this video First of all I'm going to talk about the metal lattice Or the normal metal structure of a metal crystal And I'm going to talk about the electrons that flow in those metal lattices and also about what conduction means when it comes to a metal lattice and what resistance means when it comes to a metal lattice. So those are the things we're going to cover in this video. And the reason why is because dot points say identify that metal lattice, metals possess a crystal lattice structure. So that's the first part. Then also describe conduction in metals as the free movement of electrons unimpeded by the lattice. And so these two parts are what we cover in this video. And also what resistance is when it comes to a metal lattice. So first you should know that basically any metal element, would it be sodium or titanium or boron or any of the other ones, they all possess something called a crystal lattice structure that is common to metals. And they have in their structure, they'll have their positive nuclei, which has their protons and their neutrons lined up next to each other. So all of these circles, these in the middle, green ones, they would all be positively charged because they have your no neutrons and your protons and your protons are positively charged and around them they have their electrons so the electrons are these ones here and they would be negatively charged so these little small balls the reason why they're smaller is because electrons are generally smaller than protons and they, in reality they actually be quite a bit smaller than this as well that's just a representation now what does what, these are not just again we don't just have one atom we have literally have Billions of atoms joined up next to each other, one by one. And the question would be, what keeps them together? So, why are they together? Why don't they just float around by themselves? And the reason why is because of these different charges. So, for example, again, this might be the same kind of structure. You've got your positive nuclei and your negative electrons. And these positive nuclei and the negative electrons are attracted. And this is what keeps all of these protons glued together. So you can almost view the electrons to be a bit like the glue of the metal lattice. Without these electrons, we wouldn't have all your positive nuclei sticking close by. They would just be repelled. That's so usually be positive and positive repels. Because of these negative electrons, they're actually glued together side by side. Now what you should also know is that these electrons so in this picture, it looks like the electrons are actually like one after the other and they're stationary. It looks like they have covalent bond. They're not moving at all. But obviously, when it comes to a metal lattice, we have free-moving electrons. These are freely moving electrons. And another word for the often here, delocalized. Delocalized electrons. Again, localized would mean we know exactly where they are. They're just at one location. Whereas delocalized means that they move around, they're not in the same location at all times. So you can imagine these electrons to be moving around, and they're actually going to move in any direction, right? They're going to move randomly. They're going to collide every now and then with the actual metal lattice, which would be these positive nuclei. But if we apply a voltage, so for example, if we apply a voltage and we have a circuit, this is our negative terminal, this is our positive terminal, then they won't be random, then they'll actually have a direction, right? If we have no, no, if the metal just stands around, right? For example, if you have a metal piece that you're touching now, then you have moving electrons, but they're moving in all directions, which means there's no current flowing. Whereas if you were to attach that metal piece to, let's say, voltage, then you would have current flowing through it, and you would find out because you get electrical shocks when, you, when that happens. And but what's happening is all these electrons actually have a direction, and they're all moving into one direction from the negative to the positive. That's when you apply a voltage. If it's just by itself, you have electrons moving, but they're moving in random directions. All right, so that's the first part. And the second part is just the same, same idea, but in a bit more detail, in terms of, more specifically, what does conduction mean, and what does resistance mean when it comes to the metal lattice structure? And we'll go through conduction first. What, what has to happen for electrons to be uh, conducting electricity, right? So first of all, we mentioned there has to actually be voltage applied, and there has to be a negative and a positive terminal to make sure that these electrons know where to go. In this case, they would be going from negative to positive, so they would be going in this direction. So overall, die voltage to make sure they all go in the same direction. 
But also what has to happen is they're not allowed to bump into these positive nuclei. Every electron has an energy. Right? So I'm going to, I've grabbed one here. You can see this one here. And ideally, it would grow right through the middle, not touching anything, and just keep going straight. So keep going from negative to positive, but straight without any touching these positive nuclei or with coming in contact with the electrons. Because if they do, they lose energy. Right? So they, they'll be impeded. So conduction, perfect conduction, means we have voltage applied and these electrons are flowing through the lattice unimpeded. They're just going and not touching anything. And resistance, on the other hand, means that there's a resistance to their movement, right? They've lost energy. You can take the same electron. In this case, if they get too close to another electron, they will be repelled. They'll lose some energy by being repelled. They'll go in a different direction. And if they come close to a nuclei, a positive nuclei, they'll be attracted, they'll bump into it, and it also loses them some energy. Right? So a resistance, the more resistance we have, the more there is, the more impeded the movement, right? So we have described conduction of metals as a free movement of electrons unimpeded by lattice. The more impeded the movement is for either collisions with your positive or your negative, so positive nuclei or your uh, negative electrons, the more resistance we have. And conduction means that we ha have the unimpeded movement, which means that these guys can just go through the structure without touching anything. So ideally it'd be here, they're not touching anything and going from negative to positive in a straight fashion. Now what happens if, for example, we have these nuclei at room temperature? Remember, temperature is like a measure of how much energy they have. So room temperature, we can imagine maybe these guys are they are solids, so they're not moving they're not moving like a gas, they're not moving too fast. But let's say they're just moving up and down, they're shaking up and down a bit. And that's room temperature. So you can imagine if an electron is trying to get past this, if it's shaking up and down a bit, that means it's it might hit it. So it, there's a chance that it'll hit and be impeded. So at room temperature, there'll be some resistance because this nuclei will jump up and down. And if an electron gets past it and hits that at the wrong time, it'll lose its energy. Whereas at 100 degrees Celsius, what will happen is we'll have a bit more temperature, which means we're going to have a few a bit bigger vibration. The vibration will be a bit bigger. And that means that the chance of this one, this electron, hitting that positive nuclei will be bigger because the vibration is bigger. Right? Again, temperature is energy. If they have more energy, they're going to move a bit more. So the higher the temperature, the higher the temperature, the higher the resistance. And the reason why is because these positive nuclei are moving much more and thereby have a higher chance of colliding with one of the electrons. And also on the flip side, if we decrease energy, that means there's, at, for example, at 100, minus 100 degrees Celsius. Here, they're still going to move, but it's going to move quite a bit less. Right? So it's going to have just a tiny bit of movement, which means electrons would have a bigger chance of passing through without hitting the actual positive nuclei, which means the closer to absolute zero, so the less the temperature, the less the resistance and the better they are conducted through the actual metal lattice. So I'll talk about that one again. Identify that metals possess a crystal lattice structure. That was just the idea that we have this crystal lattice structure here. And that describe conduction metals as free movement of the electrons unimpeded by the lattice. So what we mean by conduction is that these electrons can pass through this lattice without being hit by other electrons or being um, interfered with by these positive nuclei. That they move without being impeded. Whereas resistance is the opposite. Resistance means if something does happen and you do actually have a bump somewhere or they're being coming too close, then that would be considered to be resistance because resistance is the impeded movement. So resistance is like having an obstacle anyway. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.